Hey guys, it's Sushix here. Welcome back to another Cinema 4D Minecraft animation tutorial. Um, in today's episode, what I'm going to go through uh, is some really simple concepts. Probably going to be a short episode, but it's going to be all about the camera, how to move the camera, how to add uh, depth of field, which is making uh, the foreground or the background blurry uh, to add that kind of uh, depth, and keying the camera, as in moving it with an object, you know, moving it so it's realistic, like a handheld camera and stuff like that. And lastly, I'm going to go into lens flares. Um, so we're going to start off with like just creating a camera, which is something really simple, but if you don't know what you're doing, uh, it might cause issues. So we're going to go up here into create, and you're just going to go into camera and click on camera. There you go, you've uh, created a camera. Now when you create a camera, it's going to be created in the exact same spot that uh, your current preview window is in. So right now, this is where my camera is, but if I zoom back, oh, whoop, no, okay. If I zoom back, you can see this little green box, that's my camera. If I, uh, if I click on it, spin around, this is my camera, and this is where my camera is viewing. Now, if I want to uh, view from my camera's angle, you just go up here to where camera says on the top right, and click on this little black box, and that's going to put you in the camera's perspective. And when you're in this little perspective, when you move around with uh, the movement camera things in the top right of this preview box, uh, it's going to move the camera with it. So you can move the camera, you can make a look around, zoom in, like if I zoom in all the way here, I untick the box, then as you can see, my camera has moved all the way down here. So I'm going to click on this box again, zoom back out, and right now, just as reference, I'm using a, uh, a sand dungeon thing from Minecraft, I forget what they're called. Um, but yeah, as you can see, and then there's just trees, uh, water, and a lot of desert. I chose a desert because it's just quicker to render. Trees actually take a, a lot longer to render um, because of all the little gaps and stuff, so uh, I've just chosen a desert. So that's how you create a camera. That's super simple. I've shown you how to uh, move it around and uh, hopefully you guys get the gist of that. By the way, a lot of you are commenting on how to move the camera, like just the preview thing with these three little buttons. Um, I don't know how to explain it without physically showing you how I'm moving my mouse, but basically, uh, if you click on this one, right, um, and you move it to the left, you're going to move to the right. So, and you move your mouse to the right, it's going to move to the left. And then, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, I, I forget what it's called, but it's, it's going like the opposite way that uh, you move the mouse. So that's quite easy to use. If you like, you know, just click on it and move it around, you'll get the hang of it. Uh, zooming in and out, you click on it, and if you move to the left, you'll zoom out, and if you move to the right, you'll zoom in. Uh, moving up and down doesn't really do much. It's about the same thing, actually. I just normally use left and right. It's just more comfortable for me. Um, and then with the spinning, it's just, you know, moving your mouth, mouse, le <laughs> mouth, mouse left and right, and uh, you just muck around with it. It's super simple to use uh, once you get used to it. So. Next, I am going to go into how to add blur. So, I'm going to render this little scene here, try and get a bit of the background with it. Alright, so we're going to press the uh, the preview, and uh, it's going to create a little preview here. Now, I've actually, uh, this is the whole setup that I used in my last tutorial. Uh, what I've just realized, I, f I forgot to put shadows on the light. Uh, it still looks pretty good though. Oh, and these little uh, plants in the background have not got their alpha. Uh, what are they called? Dead... Dead bush? Why does it not have its alpha? How many of these blocks don't have their alpha? Uh, let me just double check these. This is a little tutorial for you guys as well. So, we go... Ah, okay, none of them have their alpha, it seems. So... Yeah, okay, I don't know why that wasn't ticked on everything. There we go. So, uh, that's actually fixed there. Oh, wait, and while we're at it, I'll turn shadow on. There we go. It's super simple to do these things, guys. It's just practicing, you know, knowing where everything is. Um, so yeah, you can see the sunlight's coming from in front of the little structure here. You can see the shadow, uh, you know, going over all the objects. And this is just uh, from your camera's perspective. If this little box here, sorry for that. If this little box here is white, that means that you're using it. You're currently using it. Uh, if I click off of it, you know, it's, I, know, I stopped the render, but you guys get the point. Uh, if I stop, and if I unclick it, it goes to your preview camera, which is a different camera completely. It's one that uh, does not have any, you know, 
details, effects, stuff like that. It's just one to preview with, and you can render on it as well. It's what you'll probably render with mostly, unless you have to use the camera specifically for effects and stuff. So, we're going to go back to the camera, and now what we're going to do is add depth of field. This is going to add depth, obviously, to your field. Um, this is going to blur the background or the foreground, depending on how you want to use it. I'm just going to show the background, though. Um, so, what you want to do is go into your uh, camera, and you're going to get all these options. You're going to go into details and to add uh, rear blur, which is basically going to add background blur, you click on this one. If you want foreground blur, uh, you click on the uh, on map front blur, obviously. Uh, so map front blur will blur this little structure here, and the back will be <coughs> um, the back will be clear. And with this rear blur, you'll be able to see the structure clearly, and the background will be blurred. So you do that. Then you'll go into your render settings, just go effect and add depth of field. Now what I generally do is lower the blur strength. So I'll probably lower this down to like 3 and this to about 60 or something. And then we'll render it out. And once it's finished rendering, then it will add the effect on. So it doesn't render the effect first. It doesn't render the effect like with the picture, it does this afterwards. And this is the same with glows and uh, lens flares and stuff, you won't see it until the full image is finished rendering. So uh, this is why, oh this is also why I chose a scene that used a lot of like sand and stuff and not a lot of trees because it's just going to quickly be able to render it to show you guys the camera effects. So it's nearly done here. And there we go. So as you can see, the background has been blurred. This foreground image here is clear. Right, so this gives a depth of field. You know, you can see, you can obviously tell that these things that are really blurred out are very far away, and it gets, you know, as it gets closer, it gets less blurry. Now, if you guys want to change the radius, right, you just go here, and you see these little white dots. You just like expand that out, right, just like that, and then it's going to make, you know, it's going to blur like further back. And you'll be able to show more foreground. Or if you want it to blur the structure, you just move these yellow things in front of it and the structure is going to be blurred. Alright. And hopefully you guys get, get how that works and hopefully you guys get the front blur too. I'm not going to show that because it's just a bit of a waste of time uh, having to render another image just to show you uh, basically the same thing. So next we're going to go into moving the camera. Uh, this is actually quite simple. Uh, if you know anything about keying, uh, it's quite simple. So uh, I might go into keying in another episode, like more in depth about it. But basically, this little red button here is how you're going to move it. So, these are the frames. Um, generally, you go on... I tend to use 30 FPS, uh, 30 frames per second in my animations, um, or anything that I do animation-wise, just because it seems more smooth, um, especially for something like this. But most people will use either 24 frames or something like that. So, if you go into... Uh, sorry, if you go into Output... I'll show you a frame rate. People, I use 30, but people generally use like 24 or 25 or something like that. Um, so basically 30 frames in this 20 frame uh, timeline will mean 3 seconds. So I can make it uh, on like from the very beginning. This is where my camera is. I'm using it because it's got the white box here. So I'm currently using my camera. I'm moving it around, stuff like that. So we're going to press this red button. This means that at 0 frames a second, I mean at 0 frames, right? Uh, on the first frame of the entire thing, it's at this location, alright? And then on 90 frames, we'll move it over to here, and we'll key it again. This means over 3 seconds, my uh, camera is going to make its way from here to here, alright? And it's going to smoothly do that over time. Now, if you want to do more drastic things, like, uh, you know, moving it, <laughs> moving it up, key it, moving it over here key it, you know, if you want to make it follow a person, you know, you've got to, the best way to do it is to actively move the camera, um, but what you can do, I won't go too much into it, but you can go into object and actually drag, you know, if I wanted to follow the light, I would drag the light into this focus, focus object a uh, little bit here, and um, and that's that, that's how you would focus on objects, but I generally like to manually move the camera, it gives me more control, and, uh, you know, it lets me make it look how I want it to look. Uh, next, what I was going to go to, uh, let me think, oh, how to make it uh, like a handheld camera, how to make it uh, shake, kind of, like when someone's moving, not like it's a horror movie and they're like full on shaking, just, you know, normal uh, shaking, because, you know, no one holds their hand perfectly still when holding a camera. So, oh, whoops, I uh, just want to delete all those. So what you want to do, this is actually quite simple, you want to go into your camera, 
you want to go into Cinema 4D Tags, go all the way down to Vibrate. Once you go to that, you just want to enable position. And I like, because these are going to make it, uh, if I show this here, it's going to move just back and forth really retardedly, right? So you want to, so that's because it's uh, on this one, just on one scale here, it's moving 100 centimeters and a frequency of two times. So this is how fast it's going to move, like how many times it's going to move in a different direction. And this is the different direction. So I generally put it on like, uh, like if we wanted to put on 888 eight, eight, and a frequency of 4. This way, if we go along the timeline, the camera is slowly moving. Now if you guys look into my intro, uh, you can tell that the camera is slightly moving. Now I like to add this effect because I think it just, it's something that most people won't notice. But it'll it'll just give it that little bit extra, and it, I, you know it's just that little bit extra that might uh, appeal to people. So you know it's make it's moving the camera. So if we zoom into this little thing here, as you can see, the camera's just slightly moving. Now, if you think that's too much, you just lower it. So we'll cut it in half, and it's moving just a little bit less. And you know if you want to move it along smoothly like this, you know, or you want to uh, have it just along someone's like hand and have it like a handheld camera, it works perfectly. Just adds that little bit of shake without you having to key in every single frame moving a tiny little bit. So that's, uh, that's a really simple thing. Now I'm just going to uh, get rid of that because we don't need it now. And the last thing I want to go into is lens flares. Now this is actually something that I learned a lot a lot longer like after uh, you know, I was learning Cinema 4D. I didn't really think much about it. I tried a few times but I couldn't get it right. Uh, so this is, this is really simple actually. Now where have I put my light? This is important. Generally, when you use infinite light, I always use infinite light. It doesn't matter where you put it on the uh, on the thing. All right, it's behind me. It doesn't matter where you put it. Uh, it just matters where you're rotating it to. But if you want to use lens flares, you're gonna have to put it in a good position. Now let's see where is it. All right, it's up here. All right. Uh, we'll go like this. There's trees there. I I don't actually like the trees there. I want to. I'm gonna move this light just to show you guys that you'll need it in a good position. So, I'm going to move it uh, behind my little fortress thing. Up in the air, of course. And, and there we go. So, it's still facing the same direction. The light has not changed at all. I haven't rotated the light source. So it hasn't actually, oh, we'll go activate the camera. So we're actually moving the camera now. Uh, it hasn't changed at all the light. We've just moved the infinite light source. Now this might take a while to get used to and understand, but it's really not that hard. So right now we've got this little white thing here. This is our light. This is our light source. Generally the sun. Um, and this is our fortress here. So what you want to do is go into light, go into lens, and then as you can see here you've got glow and reflexes are both inactive. You want to change uh, glow to whatever you want it to look like. I generally use like sun, because I want it to be a sun. So this is what it's going to look like. This little yellow thing, this is what you're going to see. And then reflexes also adds that little bit extra. Uh, I normally go, you know, something in the star, and it's going to add these little circles that, you know, adds to the lens flare, of course. So we're just going to uh, maybe render just... Whoops. No. <laughs> I rendered out a little bit of the sky. All right. Let's render this out. And once it finishes, there you go. There's your uh, lens flare. Now, it might be a bit strong for you. That's why you can go into uh, edit... You can change the size, we can change it to like 8, uh, you know, all the different beams and stuff. It's it, Cinema 4D and learning animation is mostly about mucking around and just, uh, just playing with things and stuff like that. So hopefully you guys can use this tutorial to make some wonderful animations. Hopefully this is the, the stepping stones to you guys, you know, learning much, much more about Cinema 4D. And make sure to subscribe if you are new to my channel. Uh, I'll probably be putting out a lot more of these. As you can see, it looks pretty good. Uh, the sun is a little bit big, but you guys can just change that. And you've got the uh, the motion blur in the background. So yes, as I said, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, make sure to leave a like if you if this helped you and if you guys enjoyed it. Comment down below anything you want me to uh, teach you guys next and tutorials and upcoming stuff. Um, any questions you might have. Don't inbox me because I get people inboxing me. Don't do that because I generally won't reply. Um, and subscribe if you want to see more of these and more gameplay videos, which I do a lot. Uh, so thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you guys next time.